Also, we return to the discussion about the future of work, the future of jobs. So yesterday we talked to the Attorney General and the Industrial Relations Minister, Christian Porter, um, about the sort of the big picture reform exercise that the Prime Minister's put on the table. This is, remember, he wants to get the unions, he wants to get business, he wants to get the government all sitting around the table to seeing what they agree on. Uh, in terms of reforming the industrial relations system, simplifying awards. Ultimately, it's about trying to get Australians into jobs. And this is the question I asked you yesterday. What sorts of jobs do we actually want as a country? My my view is that uh, the more high-paying full-time jobs that we can create, the better, because I think they're the sort of jobs that are related to the discussion we've just been having about childcare. A a full-time high-paying job is the sort of job that can sustain a family uh, in a way that allows them to flourish. Uh, You can uh, go to the bank manager and say, yes, I can demonstrate an ability to service a mortgage to put a roof over my head uh, and, and, you know, away we go. Now, that is clearly not the only option. There is casual work. Uh, Attorney General told us that the rates of casual employment in this economy over the past 20 years are essentially unchanged. So there is, I guess, an element of choice going on here. But if we're talking about bringing things back on shore, if we're talking about more sustainability of Australian manufacturing, if we're talking about shortening supply chains and being less reliant on importing things from China and elsewhere, we do need to try and identify what the opportunities are. And this morning, I want to talk to someone who, they put out a media release that that really caught my eye, really caught my eye. And, And I guess it's about this discussion of what sorts of jobs are we trying to create? What sorts of jobs, what sorts of perceptions do people have, especially young people, about their options for work? Uh, Jeff Crittenden is the CEO of Weld Australia, as in uh, welders. <laughs> Jeff, good morning. Good morning, Gareth. Uh, thanks for your time. Now, I thought that you've made a really interesting point here about children and parents alike understanding what jobs actually are available. Just ex- elaborate on what you're talking about here. Um, yeah, sure, Gareth. It's something we've been working on for a while. It, it's about reaching out to parents and children um, in primary and secondary schools to try and get them to understand what the jobs of the future really look like. And, and welding is, uh, is one of those classic trades. It's been around for a long time and people have a view of what welding is all about. And it's the view that it's dirty, dangerous, hot, and you do it in dark, dusty places. But, you know, it's a bit like the mobile phone. 20 years ago, a mobile phone was the size of a brick today, and in the future, it's very much different. And welding in the future is going to be um, where we integrate with cobots. Now, a cobot is a small robot that's designed to work collaboratively with a human being. So... What it means is it's simple to simple to program. It can work on small jobs. It's not repetitive like the things you used to see in car manufacturing plants. So it's it's great for small jobs. Yeah, uh, it's safe. It's high tech, and and that's the future of of welding. And it, it's it's not going to be this sort of. There'll still be some hand welding, and there'll still be people on mine sites that have to go up, and, you know, get down and dirty. But a lot of manufacturing. Even in shipyards, for example, my BAE who are building our figures talk about the digital shipyard. Yeah. And, and that's what it is. We need people to understand welding, but it's, it's not what it used to be. It's high tech. You know, it's, it's got robots, cobots. It's got data, big data. Very different from what people imagine. So it's such an interesting point because if I think about welding, I think about the old Victoria Bitter ad. You know, you can get at any old how with the bloke who takes his visor off and he's got dirt all smeared all over his forehead, hot yeah. and sweaty. I mean, that's welding, right? You're saying, no, actually, welding today is a high-tech, clean operation. Um, it is. It, and, and, I mean, there's still people that where it's done like that, but the future is very much around the high-tech. So, for example, um, Tidmac, who are one of the biggest fabricators in Australia, mm-hmm. down in, in uh, Henderson, um, there, if you go into their workshop, it, you know you could almost eat your supper off the floor in there. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. Everything, you know, it's safe, it's clean, the air's clean. Um, they've got the latest equipment. You know, it's it's just a completely different 
environment from, from what people imagine. Now, welding is a very skilled trade and you still need, you know, people to understand the processes of welding. But they don't actually have to have their nose over the weld when they're doing it these days. Um, you know, you can sit back with the, and let the, let the cobots and the robots do the work. Uh, and, you know, use your brain rather than necessarily, you know, your body. A lot of um, discussion about the training system uh, from the Prime yeah. Minister's speech the other day. Uh, and, you know, you, this is clearly where the debate gets interesting. And it's about how do we connect students at the age of 14, 15, 16, show them what the options are available. You know, maybe they do know what they want to do. Maybe they know that they want to be a police officer or a nurse or a doctor or whatever it might be. But maybe they have absolutely no idea. We, we need to get into the schools and then get into the discussions with the parents and the kids at 14, 15, 16 and show them what these future options look like. And that's where the training system comes in as well. And it's no good just training someone. You actually need to be training them for a job that exists on the other side of it. Yeah. Uh, I can't agree with you more, Gareth. Um, this is something that we've actually proposed to the government. Um, what we're suggesting is that STEM training at the moment, science, technology, engineering and maths, is, is, is very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sterile. Yeah. You know, it, there's not enough practical input into it. So what we suggested to the government is actually that we need to, um, industry and the education departments need to work collaboratively together to reach out to, to children, and not just children, but their parents, and that's so important. And um, so what we're already doing is we have um, we have an augmented reality welding trainer, which is just like the, the sexiest gaming machine you ever had for, for welders. <laughs> yep. And... Uh, and we take those out into schools and we, um, we give the, the children the opportunity to try it. And I can tell you, they absolutely love it. They need to be dragged away from it. It's just, you know, as I said, it's, it, it's a gamer's, it's a gamer's um, um, dream. This, this yeah. thing. And, so, and that's the sort of thing we need to be doing. It's not just about, you know, making them aware of math and science. It's about teaching them what the applications right. are. Uh, in for the future. I mean, I don't know what you were like at school, but it was. I it wasn't until I started to understand why you had to learn math that I actually started to get interested in it. Yeah. And I think that's the same with a lot of kids. If you understand the practical applications of why you need to learn this, then. Um, then you get excited and interested by it. Yeah, and I was no good at maths, which is why I do this <laughs> job. So uh, that's exactly <laughs> right, Jeff. Hey, mate, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Good discussion. Uh, thanks, Gareth. Jeff Crittenden, the CEO of Weld Australia, and that's welding. But I reckon you can apply this to all sorts of jobs that we currently consider in our sort of, you know, view of them to be blue collar. Uh, and it's about trying to identify and link up the opportunities uh, to the training, to the aspirations of kids and their parents. Uh, love it if you continue that discussion, 922